Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to create an in-cell butterfly chart. So a butterfly chart, basically, when you really think about it, it's a bar chart, and the bar chart goes horizontally, but it spreads out in different directions. In this example, it spreads out on the right side for positive values and to the left side for negative values. This is very similar to type of charts that you might see on the web. So for example, I got this data from the Pew Research Center. Let me go to the website and show you how they represent this chart. So now we're at the Pew Research Center website, pewglobal.org. And this is an example of the chart that uh, is shown in one of their articles. And you can see here uh, the values that are on to the right are positive values, and the values to the left are negative values. Now, um, I know that they're trying to indicate by color uh, this is the value that they're looking at, this middle class type of a category. But in the example that I'll show, uh, we're looking at negative values, and we'll use the red as uh, noting that it's a negative value, and green noting that it's a positive value. So let's go back into Excel to see how we're going to do it. So here is our data. What I'm going to do is go into another tab here where I copy most of the data, but I haven't created this chart element. So here's an example of the data that I've copied over. So this doesn't have any of the chart element features, the visual element parts, and we're going to add that in there. So we have our categories here, our six categories here, and we have our data to represent that. So basically what we're doing here is for this particular cell here, we're going to take the sum of these two values. So this is due to a change. This is the change due to the population and due to income. So in this respect, what we're going to do is we're going to sum these two values up. So I'm going to use a formula, the sum formula, to sum those two values up. Let me go ahead and select that. Uh, close the parentheses. Control enter to stay in that cell. And you see that it summed those up. Let me go ahead and double click that, and the formula will copy down. And you can see this is a negative value here because uh, 198 plus negative 867 gives you 669, a negative 669 here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to incorporate uh, conditional formatting. And conditional formatting is what we're going to do to create that bar chart. So I'm going to select these range of cells, go under the Home tab, go to Conditional Formatting, and look at the data bars. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the solid fill. And you can see as I select or as I hover over the different fills, you can see it gives us an example of what it's going to look like. I'm going to choose this green data bar. And it pretty much has what I need right now. But I'm going to make some changes. Uh, what, it's, what I'm going to do is kind of increase this a little bit so it looks a little bit more prominent. And the other thing I need to do is when we look at these values here, I don't want to have the values that are negative on aligned to the right. I want to have them aligned to the left. And we're going to have to do some additional conditional formatting to do that. The conditional format that we're going to do is we're going to base the values um, and we're going to align them based on how the values are represented. So if you notice, values that are numbers are represented and they're aligned to the right. So you see here these are aligned to the right. That's the way the Excel sees, uh, the Excel sees values uh, uh, or number values. If they're aligned to the right, it's a number. The way that Excel sees text is it aligns it to the left. So you notice here, these are text and it's aligned to the left. And what we want to do is we want to make pretend that this value is a text. Any negative values are text, so they will align to the left here. And so we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to select these range of cells and go into conditional formatting and go under manage rules. And we already have this first rule here because we selected to have that rule where we'd have the bars. We want to add an additional rule. So I'm going to click a new rule here. And we're going to click Format Only Cells That Contain. Let me kind of bring this over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to have it where the cell value is less than 0. So we have less than 0. And once that happens, I'm going to go ahead and click Format. And under Format, if it's less than 0, I'm, I want to change that number to text. So once I change that number to text, it's going to represent that number as text, and it's going to think it's text and align it to the left. So once I click OK and click OK and click OK to close the windows, you notice now that number is text, and it aligns to the left there. Now you'll also notice that in my previous example, uh, I had it where positive numbers 
had a plus sign, negative numbers had a negative sign. And uh, if we wanted to just keep this as is, that's fine. We, we, most people would know uh, n positive numbers, uh, you don't really need that positive, but if we wanted to add that in there, there's another way that we can also do that is we can change the uh, numbering format. So this range of cells are selected. I'm going to press Control 1 to get into the number formatting. So what I want to do is I want to create some custom formatting. And I'm going to go ahead and click on custom format and click over here to change it. And so what I want to do is um, the way that you can change the formatting is it's separated by semicolons. So the first number is the formatting for a positive number and then a semicolon. The second number is the formula for a, a negative number, semicolon. And then there's a third number. I think, I believe that's zero. And the fourth number is text. But I only want to deal with the first and second numbers, the positive and the negative numbers. So what I'm going to do is the first number I'm going to have a hash mark. So what a hash mark represents is any number that it sees it's going to have a placeholder for that number. Um, but first <laughs> I need to put the plus sign before the hash mark. So I'm going to put a plus and then a hash will represent any number. So you notice, uh, oops, hash not a 3. And you notice that it gave you an example. Since I've uh, selected in the cell, I'm in D7 right here, it gave me an example of what it's going to look like. So it's going to have that plus in front of it. So I'm going to do semicolon and then put a minus and then the number. And that's all I really need. I don't really care about uh, any of the other uh, values like a zero or a text because uh, I'm only dealing with numbers in this range of cells. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And uh, you'll see that now any number that's positive before it had nothing, but now it has a plus sign. So the rest of it now is basically formatting. So I'm going to go ahead and just format some of these cells here and go ahead and put a border around that put a border around this. Uh, this is not going to be the borders around everything. It's going to be the outside borders. And I'm going to go ahead and change the color. I'm going to press the control key so I can multi-select. Uh, and I believe the color here was a little grayish color. So I'm going to go ahead and, and select uh, maybe this gray here. And I had a uh, example here where it ha I had underlines across everything here. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for here. Well, I'm going to get rid of these grid lines here first. I'll go into view and uh, uncheck that. And now I'm going to put the uh, gray lines that are underneath here. So I'm going to go and select that, go under home, go under the uh, borders here, go under more borders. And I want to select a grayish color, like kind of a light grayish color, maybe this color here. And I'm going to select, the gray should be on the top, the, the horizontal uh, border areas, and go ahead and click OK. And you can see it. Most of my areas here are grayed out. Oh, I don't want, need that up top there, so I'm going to go ahead and select that and go ahead and click uh, No Borders. So it, oops, let me go ahead and Control Z to undo that. Maybe I want to do is just go ahead and select this, select this part and click No Borders here. And the borders have disappeared on the top, but the borders disappeared here on the bottom, so I'm going to just go ahead and select that and go ahead and reapply all borders there. And now I've got a nice table that has a butterfly chart. And basically, I can go ahead and just copy this and paste it into a PowerPoint presentation or put it into a blog. It's kind of a nice representation of that data. And it almost looks like what we see here in the Pew Research um, website. So let me go back into the website, and we can see that it almost looks like this. So it gives us a representation of data that we can display for our audience. So let me go back into Excel. So that's how we can create an in-cell butterfly chart. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.